afternoon guys um, so in this edition or this video I'm going to tell you how you're going to set up your water cooled spindle or your air cooled spindle and have the speed and the start being controlled through your machine um, so essentially you've got no potometer um, on your VFD as you can see and you're setting the speed up within a, a piece of software so I use Fusion 360 most of the time uh, and what I've done, I've made a couple of different files of which I can start the spindle at a particular speed just to test it. Um, now I was being a bit dense on this and I was thinking I needed to fire off a relay from the PWM and the ground pin on your gerbil control board. Um, but that's not actually the case. Um, now when I was doing some testing last few days, I was obviously doing something wrong with my testing. I wasn't very uh, methodological um, and as a result, uh, I wasn't I wasn't seeing the results I expected and it was way easier than I uh, I thought it'd be um, so just to walk you through it I've got my spindle all set up um, and I've got a 2.4 version of the uh, carbide 3d um, control board and what I did I soldered on two pins one onto the ground one onto the PWM so nice and straightforward that's the only modification I've done to the board um, to do this control test. Now, people will use those, or those two pins, to control a solid state relay similar to this, uh, to control your um, DeWalt spindle. But I've changed to a water cooled one, and I wanted to turn it on and off, but also control the speed. So just to explain the setup here, I've got a Mac here, um, which is what I'm using to control it, because I'm having some issues with my Windows machine. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it's rejecting the, um, the code, whereas the Mac it works absolutely fine. So I think there's something wrong with that machine. Now here, we've got our VFD. I'm just gonna get a bit closer to that to walk you through what we've done. So here you can see a blue and a white wire, which is my PWM and ground. I've also got another blue wire, which makes things a little bit confusing in all fairness going here. So what you're going to do, you're going to connect your PWM wire from your gerbil control board to VI, which is your digital speed control on the VFD. And then you're going to connect the ground wire, in my case the white wire, over to the ACM, which is the ground of the VFD. And that will allow this VFD to control the speed. So apologies for my dodgy camera work. Now, as I mentioned, I thought I needed to use a relay to control the, um, the actual on off because previously you have to turn this run or stop button on. Um, but if you change parameter zero one to external controls, you can actually override it. So the machine is always on. However, because no signal is being received through from PWM, it doesn't actually do anything which means the control's not spinning at all, but it can be controlled. This also means if you've got a safety switch, so I've just lobbed a normally on switch there, if I click that, it will kill the speed to this, it will stop the router from moving, and it should be a nice, smooth, and safe cutoff process. So just to recap that, DCM, and forward have been linked in the VFD. That's all I've done. I've not done any relay um, or anything else, which is uh, probably more complicated. I've actually just linked the two. As you can see, I've got my Shapiko on there, and nothing. You know, it's not doing anything. But my VFD isn't flashing, which indicates it's always on. We've put our PWM to the VI pin and ACM to the ground. So we've just linked up three connections. That's it. Now, I've got a couple of files here. Now I've got a, a 4000 RPM test, which I've just knocked together very quickly. If I click on run on that and click start. What's gonna happen now is the router is gonna start up and we're gonna see the VFD accelerate to around about 4000 RPM. It's not um, exactly precise, so there's a little bit in it, I think it's about 200 RPM, but it's pretty close. So, it's not overly exciting, there's not a lot to say, so we click start, it starts to run the code. You can 
see the spindles turned on. And if we zoom along to the VFD, 4200 RPM. Now, if we were to click OK or continue on our tool change, it will run the control program as we expect. What I'm going to do is click pause. So by clicking the pause button, it's stopped. Where if I click on start again, it's going to continue the program. And again, go across. The VFD is reading 4,200 RPM and it continues the program. And if I stop it, so I need to pause and stop. Just a little um, item. As you can see, it stopped. And I've just got some black tape there, just so you can see which direction it's spinning, etc. And make sure it's, um, it's going clockwise. Very important in uh, my eyes. Now we're going to do one more test just to rejig that. So we're going to load a new file. As you can see, I've got a couple to select. And we're just going to run at uh, 12,000 RPM. Realistically, that's as high as I'm ever going to run. Um, I don't see the point in running at 2,400, oh, sorry, 24,000 RPM. You know, it's no good to me. So I'll select my file, click open. Click run. We've got the 12,000 test. We'll zoom out again. Click on start. So we're expecting the spindle to go at 12,000 RPM. We can see it's starting to spin. Take this came off. <laughs> and zoom along to the VFD. 12,000 RPM. Click continue and it will continue and start the program. Now importantly, there's our safety cutoff. And you can see spindles slowing down. Programs there. And now we can pause so we need to uh, or stop the program and then we're good to go so all in hopefully that's shown you how you can do it and essentially how easy it is to connect a spindle up i mean i can't believe it's so um so easy and i'm a little bit annoyed i didn't crack it the other night but during my tasks i was just using the spindle on and off control using the run button um, and i just missed it i guess so one of those things but we're all sorted now. The worst part is I've drilled a hole in my VFD front for a pot only two days ago. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't need to, do, don't need that anymore. And um, the only thing that's worth mentioning is that when you first start, first turn on a Shapiko at a very low speed, if the spindle's on, so if I just demonstrate this, you'll see there's the Shapiko off. And he's, he's gone down a little bit because of the heavy spindle. If I click start, that hasn't done it this time. Um, I have seen the spindle just turn a couple of turns around at a very low speed. Normally, not an issue, but obviously, if you are, um, if you've got weak springs like I have for the time being, you might find that could damage a workpiece. Anyway, that's 10 minutes of your life you won't get back, but hopefully. It will save you uh, a lot of time later on. Thanks for watching and hopefully that's been useful. Cheers.